The comments, opinions, and views shared during this program are of those individual Freemasons and do not reflect the official position of a Grand Lodge, Concordant Body, Appendant Body, Masonic Authority, or CraftsmanOnline.com. Welcome to the Craftsman Online Podcast, the only five-star rated Masonic podcast endorsed by the Grand Lodge of New York. Hey, welcome back to the Craftsman Online Podcast. We have got a really cool extra bonus time guest for this week. We heard him earlier on Monday's episode, Brother Chris Rooley, where we're talking about the White House and Freemasonry. And here's the thing. I am a history nerd, and I think Chris and I just became new best friends because I asked, hey, Chris, do you got some extra time to spend with us on the podcast? I'm here until you tell me to stop. <laughs> Nice. Drink in hand, he's ready. <laughs> now, listen, I can make, I am very close to my bar here. I can make myself a, a nice old fashioned or I'm, I'm ready to go. You tell me. You, you pick the administration and I'll tell you the story. How about that? Anyway, go ahead, go ahead. So I'm going to ask you the most simplest question because I feel like this could be its own episode. And I'm just going to let you loose on this one. Because you haven't done so already. You mentioned this brother's name a few times. Now, I will say, with this caveat, as someone who's barely lived here for three years, I had no idea who this guy was. Why did they name a lodge after him? What was so special about him? And then I started learning the history of him. I think you know who I'm talking about. But why is Benjamin B. French the most famous Freemason that people outside of the District of Columbia have never heard of? Benjamin B. French, I think, is one of the most important Freemasons in the United States, period. End of statement. Thank you very much. Coats, check out the door. Um, I think Benjamin B. French, what he did and his record— Let's let's not even talk about his Masonic record. Let's just focus to what he did as a former clerk, as a uh, clerk of the House of Representatives, as a former the first president of the Morse Telegraph Company. It was because of Benjamin E. French slipping in the appropriation bill on a hot Friday night that allowed Samuel Morse to get the first money to get the telegraph out and going. That was Benjamin B. French. Um, he then later becomes president of the Morse Telegraph Company, but he was the first that did it. He was the first, uh, uh, what do they call it? The Republican president of the D.C. Republicans. Now, back then, Republicans were a lot different than the, the Democrats, but he was the first that brought in the president of the United States, brought in Lincoln, who was the first Republican candidate and who won the first party a candidate at that time. Um, Marshal of Lincoln's, um, excuse me, Marshal of Lincoln's inauguration, the guy in charge of organizing everything. When Lincoln died, he was the one that organized the funeral. That black catafalque that you see at state funerals at the Capitol, where they put the coffin, that black velvet drapery, Benjamin French and his son built that. They still use it to this day. All these interesting things. I can go on. I love Benjamin French. He was just an interesting character. Now, fine, let's talk a little bit about masonry. His diary at the Library of Congress is one of the best pieces of history. It's one of the best collections of the White House and the Civil War and life around the Civil War because he was meticulous. I mean, on one page, he's talking about how he attended a Grand Lodge meeting as Grand Master. By the way, served seven years as Grand Master. Can you believe it? Grand Masters are dying after two years. They want to get the heck out of there as Grand Masterships. This guy was serving seven years. Ironically, here's the funny part. He served as, pre he served as Grand Master for seven years in like the 19, 19, 1840s, 1850s. When, he, he was, when it was the Civil War, he was in charge of all the Knights Templar in the United States because he was the Grand Master of the Grand Encampment of the Knights Templar. So he was the head of the highest order of the York Rite. On one page of his diary, it'll have, oh, I attended a Masonic meeting. I did this, 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 this. On the next page, I saw, you know, uh, Charles Dickens, a play of Charles Dickens, and I met William Seward at the White House, and we had a discussion over XYZ. His diary is so filled with interesting Masonic stuff and interesting world and life stuff. 
and that he was just involved in all this. And so he, I think, best personifies what a great Masonic politician or a great politician who is a Mason could be. He masterfully figured out how to weave Freemasonry and American politics and present it. Before that, I would argue, and I have not been challenged on this yet, and I hope someone will, I found very few instances of, you know, this idea of don't politicize Freemasonry, don't make politics, don't, you know, Venture Revenge found that middle ground to bring in the presidents, bring in politicians, and speak about Freemasonry in a political context, but not to a way where we're advocating or supporting a political group. He found that narrow ground. He was also the one that said, hey, listen, when we're doing these big Masonic activities, maybe let's show off these Washington relics. Maybe let's bring Grand Lodges involved and bring them to D.C. and show them this magistry of Freemasonry. He sort of used Freemasonry as a sandbox in D.C., and he cultivated Masonry and politics into this thing that existed up until the end of Truman's administration. Because at that point, that was when politics and Freemasonry sort of went their way. The baby movers were coming in. They, they were getting, or actually the baby movers were very young, but over time in the 60s and 70s, the baby movers are getting older. Freemasonry was a little passe. We're not really interested in this stuff. Let's, you know, I don't want to join an organization that my great grandfather or grandfather were in. Now, I think men are very interested in connecting with their great grandfather and great grandfather and want to do the things that they did. But back then in the 60s and 70s, eh, Masonry is a little passe. They hang out in their little lodges and they talk about Americanism and all this stuff. Eh, let's forget that. But so, Ben Ruby French, if you say if Truman was the great grandmaster who figured it out, who enveloped Freemasonry and figured out a way of being president, French was the one that figured it out. He was the one that brought that stuff together. His diary has great Masonic research. He was a great supporter of things on both sides. Here's, here's, here's the contradiction of Benjamin B. French, and I'll, and I'll end it with this. The contradiction of Benjamin B. French is he was serving as the commissioner of public buildings for Abraham Lincoln. After the war... Benjamin B. French is the one that grants Albert Pike or helps Albert Pike receive his pardon. Albert Pike served a quick stint as a, a Civil War general in the Confederate side. He's the one, Benjamin B. French is the one that secures Albert Pike's pardon. Pike gives French a sword, thanking him for all the great work that he's done while he was secretary of the Grand Encampment during the Civil War. French gives Pike a sword. That sword is now at the House of the Temple, and it says Albert Pike, CSA. So what you're telling me, Chris, is the head of the buildings or the pub commissioner of public buildings in Lincoln's administration during Lincoln's administration during the Civil War is gifting an active general in the Civil War, a Confederate, an honorary sword appreciating his service to Freemasonry. Show me another organization. Show me another organization in the world while these two groups were fighting each other. These two sides, states were fighting each other, but these guys were able to find a common ground through Freemasonry and say, hey, listen, we may disagree. We may, we may theoretically disagree on these topics and virtues, but Freemasonry found, we found Freemasonry as a way to bring each other together. That's the contradiction of Benjamin B. French. And, and I just love that story. And, and I think there's more stuff out there. I know I'm working on a book on French to talk a little bit, to expand on these stories, because there's a ton of more stories I can talk about. Um, and, and one of them I will hint is he plays a very pivotal role during the Gettysburg Address. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that as a little teaser for another article or another uh, podcast. But um, yeah, I just like I just I just find him such a fascinating character. Anybody that got to spend that much time as basically like the right hand man for President Lincoln during that important time during American history. Right. And I did not know, as you pointed out, an excellent note taker. Yeah, I want to read <laughs> what he had to say um, because he's a great source for that. I'll get you out of here on this one. I promise. Bring it over. I feel like we have talked so much about D.C. and I'm thinking you and I feel the same way having lived here. 
I came down before I moved down to DC, I would do walks around where I worked in upstate New York, just thinking about like, oh, on my lunch break, when I'm working down in DC, I can't wait to walk around the Capitol. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to see and all the places and the sites. And I wanted all of it, man. And I get so excited when people want to come and visit and they're like, oh, can we just go to the mall? I hear you guys have a big mall around here. Like the National Mall? No, no. <laughs> I don't think the malls yeah. where you come from. <laughs> so my challenge is, is that I'm hoping that we have brothers who have heard this podcast and they're like, yeah, you know what? I want to come to Washington, D.C. and really soak up some Masonic history. If you would one day hear. What would you do in that one day as a Freemason? I'll even give you the day. Come on a Thursday. The reason I say Thursday is closer to the weekend. It's not that serious. It's not the Monday. It's not the Tuesday traffic. Thursday's pretty good. If you're in town for the week, great. But make it a Thursday. Start at the House of the Temple on 16th Street. Go to the House of the Temple early in the morning. Try to hit that first presentation. The reason I say that is regardless of when you go, and especially during the summertime, it is hot in the room because there's no air conditioning in the main room. So go to the House of the Temple first. Um, check out the library. Check out the House of the Temple on 16th Street for Sky Detroit. Then, easy, just go straight down 16th Street. You hit the White House. Go straight down to the Washington Monument. You see the Washington Monument. Turn right, see uh, Lincoln and Jefferson memorials are right there. Then take an Uber from there because it's a lot easier to get across from to Alexandria from there. But take yourself down to the Alexandria Memorial and then do the afternoon at the memorial. Soak up the sites of the uh, Masonic George Washington National Masonic Memorial down there. Now, why did I say Thursday? Why not Friday? Why not Saturday when when it's just busy with traffic? Uh, the House of the Temple is closed on Friday, so a lot of brothers Friday or Saturday they're they're closed on the weekend. They're closed on Friday, and so I've had plenty of brothers reach out to me. I'm here. I just got here on Thursday. I want to hit the House of the Temple on Friday when you know I, I've got a free day. And I said, uh, you. You, I'm so sorry. You've lucked out. You, you, or you, you haven't lucked out. You, your, your luck's run dry because the house of the temple is closed. So get there on a Thursday, hit the house of the temple, go down to see the sites, take an Uber or whatever down to the memorial the, the, in Alexandria, Virginia. You'll, you'll certainly not, uh, you'll not regret it. Definitely one of the most captivating guests we've had to kick off 2024. Oh, stop it. <laughs> No, seriously, uh, thank you so much for coming on and giving us some bonus time on this episode of the Craftsman Online Podcast. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm pleased to I'm pleased to see that you're doing such great work. And by the way, great podcast, great topics. It's 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 enjoyable. I love it. I share it with my friends and family. And so I, I Mike, thank you for what you're doing for getting it out there and doing it so professionally and, and bringing in some great people. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, friend, if you've enjoyed this episode, you can help us out in a big way. Just take a second, open up your podcast player and give us a review, some stars, a comment, anything you add to this episode, wherever you're listening, helps those with an interest in Freemasonry find this light. Really enjoyed our time together again this week. Until next time, let peace and harmony prevail.